Why are control valves blamed when it comes to fugitive emissions? In a plant, there are tanks available, relief valves available, then why control valves? The reason is, if you look at the stats, only 10 to 15 percent of the fugitive emissions is by pressure relief valves or tanks, but a woofing 60 percent is by valves. Why is this so? These are static components, meaning if there is an H2S or basically any fugitive emissions that is happening, you can put in a gasket and tighten the bolts. Once this is done, because these are static components, you can easily reduce the fugitive emissions. Let us take the example of a control valve. When a control valve comes in picture, a control valve is continuously moving in the plant. So because of that, even though there is fugitive emissions coming out, you cannot make this thing too tight. Why? Because even if you make it too tight, the control valve will not be able to move. And this is the dynamic nature of valve which makes it an engineering problem to be solved. And after that, you also have the environmental, social and government pressures coming in for industries. And the government norms have become so strict that initially it used to be 500 parts per million in volume. It's turned out to be 100 ppm V and now it's stringent as much as 50 parts per million in volume, which is a very minuscule quantity. The emission standards that are used throughout the world are ISO 1548 AP and TALAF standards in Germany. And the ISO is further divided into part 1 and 2. API is divided into 622, 624 and 641. TALAFs we will see the 2021 revision that is the latest which has come as of now. In order to understand these concepts, you need to understand the concept of type testing. The type testing is basically when you test a particular valve, for example, let's take a 3 inch 300 rating valve for fugitive emissions and a similar valve for example let's take 2 inch 150 rating valve will pass the test without actually going through it why because a particular type or higher was tested so this one can pass similarly if the size changes from 2 inch to 6 inch still this will pass however if the rating changes up till 900 rating then this will fail you will have to redo the test for this particular valve let's try to summarize type testing so in type testing basically if the rating is similar or lower you can go for it if the tightness class is similar or lower or you could say generally a similar configuration except the size then a particular type is tested then the rest of the type can be passed in with type testing the second opposite to it is something called as production testing let's imagine here you have butterfly valves which are 20 in number let's imagine you have 8 inch 150 rating butterfly valves and you have ball valves which are 20 in numbers all of them are same they are 2 inch 600 rating ball valves now let's put them in production testing. Once production testing is to be done, you have to first decide whether it is going to be 100% of testing or only 10% of the testing. For example, let's imagine that you will go for 100% of the testing. So you will have to test almost 20 number of both the valves together. Why not a single valve has to be left because you have done 100% testing. If you decide for 10% of testing, then only two numbers of valves have to be selected from the butterfly type and the on-off valve type. But remember that these valves have to be selected at random. So getting to ISO 15848 is we can divide it into two parts. The part one deals with basically type testing which we just saw and type two deals with production testing. Getting further in depth into ISO 15848 is the tightness class which is very important. So the class has been divided into class A, class B and class C with the test gas being either helium or methane with the word as H and M defining them. Now let us try to first have a helium classes of let's say imagine we have AH, BH and CH. Let us know which is the most stringent and the least stringent class. So class A will be the most stringent while class C will be the least stringent. Now if you notice here you have two gases. So what if you use methane? If you use methane, then you're going to have M there. So you will have AM, BM and CM. Now you might have the question that why methane? Okay, helium is understood it is an inert gas, but why methane is used as a test gas? The first thing is what I could understand is the reason being is it is the lightest hydrocarbon and one of the most fugitive emission prone industry is the hydrocarbon industry. So if you can contain the least weighted hydrocarbon then the other heavier gas can also be contained from fugitive emissions. Let us take a practical example. So let's imagine our test gas is methane. So how much is the actual requirement of the standard? So if you see here, let's put AM, BM and CM here. The tightest requirement gets very stringent. If you see here, it starts from 500 parts per million in volume for class C, then it gets to 100 ppmv. And finally, class A is having a very stringent requirement of 50 ppmv. And this is not only to be 
be done once it has to be done with various mechanical cycle of on off etc and thermal cycle of heating and cooling the valve so after all this your valve should maintain a tightness class as required in the standard further to it iso 1584 it also has another requirement that is for the static part if you notice here in the valve this is a joint between the body and bonnet now here also there are chances of fugitive emissions so here the minimum criteria is 50 ppm v for regardless of the class because this is a static component it is far easier to meet as compared to the packing So the APA standards are basically divided into three important standards that are used throughout the world. First one being is APA 622, 624, and 641. APA 622 stands for the valve packing itself. Then APA 624 starts for rising stem valves. Basically, you can give example of globe valves, gate valves, etc. 641 basically stands for quarter turn valves. Now the emission criteria are comparatively stricter. If you see 100 parts per million volume, 100, and for packing it's a bit lenient to 500 ppm v. And I think as the future progresses, these are going to get even stricter but remember all of these three standards fall under type testing so only for production testing you had iso 1584 at part 2 these three are type testing standards tahalaf is one of the most amazing standards the 2021 version is really made everything very simple the performance verification is kept as per iso 1584 it and the tightness class is very clearly defined and as per which type what tightness class has to be selected Finally we look at something very important called as the valve paradox now what does this mean if you see here you can see a control valve and you can see the bonnet and the packing is put in place this is the packing which you can see in red now the valve paradox is basically when the control valve is working and trying to regulate the flow this is dynamic in nature so the paradox starts when you have fugitive emissions happening and you decide to make the packing even more tough so what happens if i put a tough packing the fugitive emissions will become less because it is more tight but because it is being more tight there will be more friction and that will cause basically the valve to function with very low performance however if i try to reduce the packing to have a better performance i will again have fugitive emissions happening for this to develop engineers had to think a lot and come up with creative solutions valve packing options now have become very dynamic you didn't initially you just had ptf or graphite which is to be used but now you have things like duplex special materials to be used and you have live loading bellow seals etc The first one being is as a general thumb rule PTFE is better than graphite when it comes to its sealing capabilities but then why do we use graphite reason being is let's try to look at a temperature modeling so if you see here basically the temperature at the valve will be almost similar to process and eventually as it goes up the temperature does reduce but there is an effect on temperature so the packing is put somewhere here let's imagine we put PTFE but if the temperature is too high at this points so let's say imagine 200 degree celsius or above even that then PTFE might not be able to sustain so for that in case we might have to still have to go for graphite packing now sometimes graphite might be good but the fugitive criteria is too much stringent in that case maybe graphite might not be able to meet so vendors have come with some amazing concepts like duplex packing so what happens here is you use a combination of graphite plus ptfe so graphite can be used to contain the temperature and ptfe can be used for its amazing sealing capabilities then you have special designs which are available such as you have calzer special material special v design etc but all of these things again have one important problem the problem is let's take this graph to understand it this is the fugitive emission that was done on a valve at 7 bar pressure with methane being the test gas and on the y axis you see the leakage rate in parts per million volume and on the x axis you see the time just at 300 hours which is just a few days you can see there have been 900 parts per million volume of fugitive emissions happening in the wall why is this happening and if you see here 900 is a very big number when you compare to our standards and sometimes the stringent criteria can go to 100 to just 50 parts per million and the second thing you notice here is after retorquing again the fugitive emissions got reduced so the packing even though you make it tight because the control valve is continuously rotating or basically moving it is going to again make the packing loose now let's take another graph this is a live loading packing with a spring put into it now if you see here after even 600 hours the fugitive emissions are still so less this year and compare normal packing where we saw the emissions are going up till 900 ppm v and here if you see for live load packing it is not even going at 600 hours for greater than 200 ppm v so there is a difference with using live load packing right let's get in depth about it 
connected. So basically, if imagine is a control valve, and here's the packing put in place. Instead of manually retorquing the valve again and again and again, why not engineers thought to do something smart and put a spring which basically holds it together. It is like dwarfs which are basically trying to hold the packing together. And this is basically the principle of live load packing, where a continuous load is put on the packing. Hence the name comes live load. Packing. If you're liking the video, you will surely love the ebook on control valve mastery. It's a completely free ebook which has amazing things like material selection, valve sizing, valve design, and valve standards. Finally, learn about the bellow seal packing, which was the last packing which is available, or material selection. Both the videos are already made. You can check it out below or in the description.